Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Squeezy Bits, and well, I just rented this for $20. So let's go ahead and talk about it, if it was worth it. Roll the intro. Yeah. Scoob, I feel like Scooby-Doo was such a part of my childhood that I almost refused to let it go. The moment Scoob intro the Tupac's California love, I knew it was going to be different. I was looking for the hippie Scooby-Doo theme song. But if you can let go of all you know about Scooby-Doo, then you may have a better chance of enjoying this movie. It's a movie that is trying to fit into today's fast-paced modern age via wireless update. They've traded in everything that we know about Scooby for something more new, like trading in a 1986 Toyota Corolla for a more modern 2020 Corolla. Don't get me wrong. I'm very much a fan of the 1986 Corolla, but not everyone will share the same obsession for the classics. And that's okay. Because this version of Scooby-Doo is trying to create new fans from a newer, younger audience. The only trace of the past is the Mystery Machine. They've traded in hippie for hipster. The animation, for example, is the evolution of Scooby-Doo. Honestly, I found it to be a very beautifully animated movie. Many people will appreciate its Shade Cell-esque color, as the animators really flex today's lighting technology. The light always felt like it was natural, like it was coming from a real traceable source. That's all I really want to say about the animation. The characters are voiced well by A-list actors like Zac Efron, Ken Jeong, and even... Mark Wahlberg. There are more celebs, but I don't want to spoil too much of the story. The story doesn't reach too much for nostalgia, but it uses this movie as a battery to jumpstart several Hanna-Barbera studio characters into this decade. It starts off with a short, shaggy, and scooby origin, then continues to introduce the rest of the gang of Mystery Inc. Insert an old, much appreciated classic Scooby-Doo style chase montage. Fast forward the transition into a matured Scooby and the gang, which I wish they were to explore a little more. They eventually split up, but not in the original Let's Split Up Gang Scooby style, but more afternoon drama, I don't need you guys kind of breakup, which divides the gang through almost the entirety of the movie. This is when they start rolling in some Hanna-Barbera characters. The story isn't the regular whodunit type story where they find out who the bad guy is. It actually starts off with a more famous bad guy from the Hanna-Barbera collection, Dick Dastardly. Fans of the original will expect a chase around a haunted mansion, but instead it's more of the global chase like where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? And instead of the regular man behind the mask, expect to see something... Um, a more supernatural type query. $20 is a lot for this movie if you're gonna watch this by yourself, especially if you're comparing it to most rentals that are four to five dollars. But this is a new normal and this is cheaper than going to the movies. It's going to be a while before we can all go back to sitting inside a movie theater, but it wasn't bad. I would honestly watch this over Trolls 2, maybe even put this right there neck and neck with Onward, which I think is a couple of ratings better than Spies in Disguise. If you're really looking to have a movie night during this new normal and are bored of everything on Netflix, Hulu, or Amazon Prime, and sold a whole bunch of toilet paper, then go ahead and buy Justice League Dark, Apocalypse War. But if you have young kids in the house and you're doing this for them, then this isn't such a bad idea. I think adults may find it a little hard to enjoy this, especially if you're not willing to let go of that Scooby-Doo that you know. Now, if this movie had one important message to tell you, it's that there are very few things that are better than friendship. Well, that's it for my review. Let's go ahead and read some comments. Uh, from my previous video, Tremors, Man Man says, Watch Hollow Man. Kevin Bacon was great in those times. Favorite campy movie for me was Little Shop of Horrors. Actually, will do. I actually have a review on Hollow Man coming up. Keep an eye out. And Little Shop of Horrors is great. Can't say anything bad about it. Oh, uh, Tony Villena. Subscribe, bro. I'm gonna try to keep the content coming. Hoping I can steal five minutes of your time every week. Think this is on my Justice League review? Zach A. Thanks for the share. This review makes me want to watch this movie. I might just do it. LOL. LOL. However you want to say that. Thanks for watching. It's awesome. You definitely have to watch that Justice League movie because you're missing out. And that's it for my comments. Thank you all for watching this. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment. And I'll do my best to get to all of them as soon as I can. Check me out on Instagram, and don't forget to check my friends out at The Geek Bros. Links are down below. I'll see y'all later.